ਸਤਿ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਅਕਾਲ ਜੀ ਗੁੱਡ ਈਵਨਿੰਗ ਐਂਡ ਆਈ ਵਿਸ਼ ਆਲ ਆਫ ਯੂ ਹੈਪੀ ਗੁਰੂ ਗੋਬਿੰਦ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਇਸ ਗੁਰਪੁਰਬ ਵਾਈਲ ਵੀ ਆ ਰਿਜੋਇਸਿੰਗ ਐਂਡ ਸੈਲੀਬ੍ਰੇਟਿੰਗ ਗੁਰੂ ਗੋਬਿੰਦ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਇਸ ਗੁਰਪੁਰਬ ਆਵਰ 10th ਗੁਰੂ ਬਟ देयर ਇਜ਼ ਸਮਥਿੰਗ ਵੈਰੀ ਸੀਰੀਅਸ ਵਿਚ ਵੀ ਹੈਵ ਟੂ ਟਾਕ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਟੂਡੇ ਐਂਡ ਟੂਡੇ ਵਾਸ ਦ ਡੇ all the more important because one side i see this appeasement process which has run by the government of india at least the prime minister of this country are trying to or the government in itself are trying to appease six but what we want to talk about and the question today i want to ask nationally internationally that not even 36 hours ago not too long ago only 36 hours there were prominent personalities from their twitter handle or facebook handle and verified accounts prominent personalities of india they were inciting people at large to engage in a mass murder of six which is called sikh genocide now this is a very serious concern when such at such large extent a social judgment or a social way was created to kill six and to incite in sikh genocide this is something which six also have to discuss amongst themselves as a community and we have to ask the world you know let's go back where it started from it started uh, with prime minister's visit to punjab he was to go to a rally which due to some shortcomings in the system he could not reach though his perceived security threat that his life is in danger in punjab or it was in danger in punjab that kind of narrative was built the same narrative was picked up by the media the national media channels they kept amplifying it they kept emphasizing on it and what it did it created hatred amongst the people in the central india and in the other parts of the country against six the hatred was displayed openly so such and such that what we have realized as a community that within the majority or so called majority of india they still have this beast hiding in them where they have hatred towards all the minorities and the six now a lot of people they come and say that no it's today we are different citizens and different india we are living in people are well educated and we do not expect genocidal threat from them but it is reality we faced it we faced threat we have faced that they are threatening us with dire consequences which are worse than 1984 when six genocide happened in new delhi because prime minister of this country due to some shortcomings in the system could not reach the rally and his perceived security threat the facts were not known there is no official statement from pmo no official statement from home ministry no official statement from spg no official statement from even punjab government the facts were not known 
and the matter is also subjudice in the Supreme Court. But six were blamed and threatened and threatened with dire consequences which they have to face if Prime Minister were to be harmed in Punjab where we had no intention to do something like that and the consequences which are worse than 1984. Now what does it show? It shows that there is that beast which is still there and it is passed on from one generation to another to another in the minority in the majority against the minorities and today especially against six. So the question I want to ask that why nobody, nobody at the national level raised this question or raised voice specifically in favor of six. And then very importantly, when in 1984, we faced sick genocide in New Delhi, we were to or we were made to believe that Congress did it. Now, it is very important for us to understand today. OK, let's assume for a moment that Congress did it or Congress did it. But the same Congress party is contesting elections. A month later, it happened in December 1984. In November 1984, the Sikh genocide. In December 1984, there were general elections in India. And the Congress party came into power with thumping majority of 402 seats. So what does it mean? It means whenever there is a genocide of a minority, the majority will reward that political party. And the Congress was rewarded. They did not grab the power. They were democratically elected. And they came into power and form formed a government. So the same formula they tested in 1984. Similarly, it was tested in 2002 in Gujarat. And what are they trying to do? They are trying to probably use the same formula today to come in power. Is this democracy? So this is what we have to tell ourselves as a minority, as a Sikh, or if there is any Muslim or a Christian that you're not safe because they can come after you without any provocation, you will be hunted down and you will be killed and the majority will reward them to come in power and form a government. So what do we have to tell ourselves as a minority that we are not safe in this country? We cannot represent our diversity and our diverse principles or we cannot follow a particular faith. And if we do not align ourselves with the majoritarian system, then we will face dire consequences or will be threatened that a genocidal program will be run against us. I want to tell all my Sikh brothers that no matter how many langas you hoist, you'll host no matter how many oxygen cylinders you'll distribute, no matter in crisis, you will help this nation. No matter that you will in every natural calamity donate or go and help the needy and, and people who need help or people who require some, they have some basic requirements. It takes one second for the majoritarian system and the majority to forget about all that and to kill you. This happened. This happened in Delhi in 1984. Irrespective of the fact what party, political ideology or party you belong to or what you have done for the nation. They do not care about nation building. What they do, they in 1984 attacked 
General Aroda, who was a national hero in Bangladesh war. They also attacked Air Chief Marshal Arjun Singh Ji. Even Gyani Jail Singh's car was attacked when he was a president of this country. So what actually when this genocidal impulse flares up, what it does, they attack your identity and they attack your appearance. No matter in what political system you are in, what party you are serving. So I want to tell my fellow Sikh brothers that it takes one second for them to burn down the same Gurdwara in which they're eating langar from. Is this what we are living in? And this is the largest democracy that we as a minority, whenever there is an expression, whether it is to do with our rights or it is to do with our existential crisis, we have to face genocidal threat. This happened on the 26th of January when we were defamed, we were ridiculed and then we were isolated and then we had to go to jails. And we are still facing different criminal cases or charges on us. So the question is very relevant that anywhere we are sitting in this country because they've gone down to an extent saying that it will not only be restricted to New Delhi, it will be the genocidal program which they threatened us to run. It will be pan India and even internationally. Now the question becomes very relevant that all of us, people like me who are living outside Punjab, what do they have or what do they feel that they can be hunted at any point of time, they'll be hunted down, then they will be killed by the mob and what we have to do is stare at our murder or death. And the threat which was coming that irrespective of your gender and age, you will forget 1984. Now this is a very serious question and this is a very serious situation which has to be brought into light because the situation or this crisis or this whole event of Prime Minister visiting Punjab where we feel as Punjabis, as Sikhs, that he's absolutely safe because we respect that position. Though ideologically we can differ from him, but we respect that position he's holding, that chair he's holding, and we understand how important it is to show respect. And he was most welcome. Nobody is saying that you cannot go and hold a rally or conduct your meetings, political meetings. If there were farmers protesting, they were protesting for their genuine concerns peacefully. Now the law says, the Supreme Court in itself says that you can protest peacefully. It does not say that if a prime minister is probably going to hold a rally, then you cannot protest. So this whole human cry, which the media amplified too, and on social media, some elected representatives of people, now that is a serious thing. If elected representatives of people are also threatening sex with dire consequences, which are worse than 1984, has brought out this beast in the majority and it has been passed from gen one generation to another because first time it came into the light in 1966 during Punjabi Suba movement when there were six killed and injured in Delhi only because they were asking or they were protecting their language and rituals only because of that. Then 
We faced the same sex genocide in 1984, November in New Delhi. We faced sex genocide in Punjab from 84 to 2002. So again, if we are after so many years at the same juncture, that means this beast in majority still hiding there. So I want to also ask a question to the majority of our country or to all the peace loving people or people who reward such political parties who engage or incite people at large to engage themselves in any genocide that you may be rewarded in India. What, what are you going to do and what are you going to represent at the international level when you go for United Nations meetings or conferences at that platform, when you go for European Union conferences, what are you going to represent there yourself as? That we are a country or a civilization which is more than 5,000 years old and we are engaged in mass extermination of a microscopic minority like sex because they did not align with our ideology because they have different principles because there is diversity in them and we do not acknowledge and we cannot allow them to have their diversity either they assimilate within us or we will eliminate them and run a genocidal program so what kindly tell us after sex who's in the wait list are Muslims in the wait list or Christians are in the wait list please tell us this because the beast is not going to stop it is passed on from one generation to another to another and it is still hiding in that majority in India you know let uh, let's historicize this it is the same program which Nazis have run against the Jews in 1930 again same program 360 across 360 they were attacked they were threatened they were ridiculed they were defamed and same happening with six because there was this bully by app which came into the light where they were impersonating sick names to auction some women a women who are activists who are raising their voice against injustice now why are you impersonating sick names to defame them to show that they are not only anti-national because that's where you put us that's the category you put us in you call us anti-national, Khalistanis, and then you justify your whatever violence you, the state does on us. So the repression is justified by saying that they are Khalistanis or they are anti-nationals. And also you are defaming us through these apps by showing that they are not only anti-national, but their characters are full of lust. Look the way they look at women. Well, that's not a sick character. We are, we don't have to, we don't have to tell the world who we are. And kindly stop defining us, defaming us, attacking us 360. And this is exactly what Nazis have done to Jews in the 1930. They first defamed them, then they took over their businesses all the Jews were put in concentration camps then they were made slaves to do a forced labor so Jews realized this after 60 lakhs Jews were killed that the whole system is against us so what do we consider and that's why they went to a safer place made their own country and thought that this is a place where we are safe where we cannot be attacked or killed 
just for a fact that we are a Jew or practicing a particular faith. So when a statements are made that across the country we will run a genocidal program, the question we need to ask is kindly tell us if there is any unstated program or unstated some kind of program you're running to identify six across the country so that when that impulse will flare up, you will just come attack us and kill us for no fault of us, just for a fact that we are practicing a particular faith and we are minority and are representing our diversity. So finally, I want to ask all the six who are hurt by these statements on social media, I want to ask all of them to kindly question these so-called prominent faces or the majoritarian system representatives that this is what you want to do to us, you want to run a genocidal program against us and how do you plan to do it? Kindly tell us. Because they should know that survival instinct is always greater than the threat. They should remember this. Finally, I want to also ask the Minority Commission of India and the Human Right Commission of India that have they taken so motto cognizance against such statements whosoever has made on social media or on the national channel and are they taking some kind of action against them? So we have to ask the system and raise a question. It is time when we have to within ourselves as a community brainstorm that if this impulse, genocidal impulse or this beast is still there in the majority, then how do we safeguard us? How do we start a defense mechanism or create a place where we are safe? I wanted to talk to people at the national and international level because it's something very serious when socially this kind of judgment is created and such kind of uh, hatred is displaced across the country against six. And in the end, I want to also say that we as six are no threat to no one. Do not pose existential crisis for us. Otherwise, like I said, instinct, which is in any human being or animal, survival instinct is greater than the threat. Thank you so much. ताज़ा खबरों के नवीन जानकारी पर पूर्व वीडियोस देखने सब्सक्राइब करो सदा यूट्यूब चैनल प्राइड पंजाब टीवी तो सदा फेसबुक पेज प्राइड पंजाब टीवी नो फॉलो जरूर करो तिनाल ही नालेस नो लाइक भी कर लो